This is Throwing Shade, Shade, where feminasty Aaron Gibson and homosexual Brian Safi take a look at the headlines in politics and pop culture and treat them with much less respect than they deserve. Can you handle it? Suddenly we were both butt naked banging on the bathroom floor. Oh, nice. oh, 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 is it a mashup? Yeah. It's only time for milkshakes. Time after note? sometimes. You know what? Ditch it all. Let's go on a cruise. We were doing and it. try to make some money. Yeah. That would be good. That's What's after opinion. Cindy Lauper? Time after time. When you're lost, you can look and you will find. I'm trying to think of something. Me. Me. Time after, after time. time. Tick tock, you don't stop. Stop to the tick tock, you don't stop. Stop. Stop in the name of love. And I'm going to do a haunting melody. Before you break my heart. I don't know any songs with heart in it. We should go on carnival cruises. We should knock on the door and be like, excuse me. Put down the moat. Yeah, we'll go in full clown face. Great. (laughs) We're not the insane clown posse. We're here to revel you with song. (gasps) Excuse me. Put down your bridge. Two clowns here looking for work. Heard of girl talk? We're the we're that, but we're a guy and much, a girl. Much much worse. And v- very slow. Yeah. And we do more than ten <laughs> seconds. And sometimes it takes us a while to figure out what the next song is. We don't sing with music. We refuse. Two, three, four. I can't live without your love and affection. I can't waste another night on my on own. On my own. <laughs> Hi, Russ! <laughs> yeah. Anyway, how was your labor day? <laughs> oh, I went into labor. Oh, you did? Yeah, they wouldn't let me have my baby. Uh, they said it's against the rules. Yep. The unions are watching your clock. Sure. And I was like, my clock's a ticking, like uh, like uh, my cousin Vinny. Oh, yeah, that's right. Do you notice anything different about me? You're working out right now. I am. Yeah. I got a personal trainer. So I went and I was like, let's do it or whatever. I mean. Remote controls on I, on PS3, yeah. yeah. I went in with my Segway and was like, I'm here. And I was like, what's the plan? Da, 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 da. And I, he was the kind of person that you couldn't talk to anything about, give him personal information about. Like, you couldn't ask him personal questions. Like, he'd be like, oh, how long have you, you guys have been doing this? And he's like, chicken only, man. Like, just only wanted to talk about diet and next. Like, you couldn't crack it. So then the session ended. Like, I was ready to go again. And I was like, what's the schedule going to be? Oh, you were ready after all that broccoli talk? You needed more? All that broccoli talk. I was like, God, this is the most stimulating thing. So anyway, he texted me and he was like. Please tell me that he <laughs> just emojied you like all the only all the emoji just, vegetables. It was, you, you know, all all he he, he sent me a, a picture of all the famous cartoon broccolis. And I was like, oh, I know who this is. And then he texted me. There's only me, one, right? Are there, is there one? From I feel like there's a broccoli in picture pages. I could be wrong. Oh, maybe. So that dude. So anyway, he texted me that. And then I was like, ha ha, I know, right? Whatever. Like. Like, haha, Guardians of the Galaxy, like trying to relate. Yeah. And so anyway, so he wrote back and he was like, are you sore today? And I was like, I am very sore. When can we do this again? And he was like, haha, knew you'd be sore. And I was like, I'm not going to get into some fucking Wait, he laughed? flirt text bullshit. It felt like I was flirting with someone. And I was like, just get to the point. And I was like, when can I come in and train again? And he was like, haha, know it, buddy. You know what I mean? It was just like fucking OK Cupid thing of like, are we going to hang out? Or are we going to do this all day? Yeah, everyone wants to do this all day. And so finally, I was like, what day are we doing it? And he sent me some dates. And I said, perfect. You better have at least five conversation topics about spinach for this week. It better be a different vegetable every week because I'm not talking about broccoli all goddamn day again. Are you even concerned with what he's saying? I'm very concerned. I take it to heart of palm. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Did you start working out with the trainer because I started working out with the trainer? Did I, did, were, were I think you there looking, was some influence were you looking there. At my Excuse me, my eczema. I think there was some influence there. Because I started um, dropping the pounds. Yeah. Yeah. And are your gloves okay? I'm so sorry. I, oh, I don't have them on. I usually it's have like been driving. It's like watching a Paul Olive commercial. I've been driving. I've been driving with opera gloves just oh. to make sure I don't tan, you know, or burn or anything. I put on my gloves. I put all my jewels on each finger. And I roll down my windows. And I wave at people I don't even know. Like, and I'm like... Hi, rich, rich. Anybody and you rich? Like, you were, and they're like, Madonna material girl video? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I rolled on my window and I say, $10,000 a finger. Hello. I can't imagine how beautiful it is to see a full grown man in a white <laughs> opera glove with, with the jewels on and a American apparel, 50, 25, 25 shirt on. Who knows if pants, because you're in the car. Probably not. Yeah. yeah. I, who even knows Probably if you showered? In fact, for the next training session, I'm going to go in the full opera gloves. Oh, that's good. Good. It's it's so easy to grasp weights mm-hmm. when you're wearing a full rubies. Well, I thought because the first session he was like, this is going to be more of an assessment to like see where you are. I thought I was going to get a binder. I thought he was going to talk.
talk to me about like you know my 401k options yeah. none of that you thought you were gonna have a binder with tabs and different yeah, sections exactly did you find out if you were an autumn spring winter or summer i'm a spring oh yeah fourth 420 fourth down fourth down oh golf yep exactly football's back yeah. Put on your slacks, enjoy a game, right? Yeah. Isn't that the NFL theme song? Every, yeah. So anyway, the NFL's back. Yeah, thank God. Very, very uh, awkward incident Agreed. happened. <laughs> <laughs> The second most awkward thing to happen in sports this year, besides what just happened. What just happened? Besides what just happened. ESPN mm -hmm. has a you know has Sports Center, which is like I guess their like signature show there. It is. It's their yeah. biggest show. People are like, gotta get home to watch Sports Center. Exactly. So a reporter, Josina Anderson. Josina. Josina was on the Cena. Uh -huh. Is that funny? That's yeah. what they should call her segment. Josina, you seen a Josina on the Cena? They did a segment called How Michael Sam is Fitting In With His Teammates. That's a segment? Well, that's what the lower third was called. In case no one knows, Michael Sam is the, the first openly gay NFL player. So the question to her while she was on the scene was, how is Michael Sam fitting in so far? Someone at Sports Center in their own square asked her in her square. Exactly. Yeah. It was Hollywood squares, but sports style. Yeah, and there's only two squares. Only two squares. You can't so do you can't You do. can't actually ever win. So how is Michael Sam fitting in so far? So here was I'll do her answer bit by bit. The first part. Well, defensive tackle Kendall Langford, who was also on the Rams, said that Michael Sam is simply one of the guys and seems to be taking a rookie approach, listening and learning at his own pace. Even up until this point, this doesn't <laughs> There's no be, story. There's, no, there's story. no story. It's really just, how's Michael Sam doing? Fine. Well, I, Bye. I really think it's just like, <laughs> Michael Sam, still gay? Uh-huh. I mean, that's what they're getting at, they don't, obviously. They don't. They haven't done this with any other rookie. Her next sentence. But another Rams defensive player, unnamed, unsourced, another Rams defensive player. So nobody. Who knows? But another Rams defensive player said that Sam is, quote, respecting our space. What? And from his perspective... He seems to think that Michael Sam is waiting to kind of take a shower to not make his teammates feel uncomfortable. So apparently Michael Sam, according to a defensive player according on the team. According to the person who folds the towel. Is too afraid to shower. Is like, is trying to be respectful by not showering there. And then she says, while well, Lankford and another linebacker, Alec Ogletree, said that they didn't know specifically if that was why and that they weren't tracking that. Because they're like, I'm here to play sports. Yeah, we're not tracking when he's showering or why he's showering. Oh, let Who's me look at my spreadsheet. And yeah. also, who said this? Yeah. Who said that? Well, how's Michael Sam doing? Well, he's he's trying not to shower in front of people. So that's respectful. Yeah. What are you talking about? He's staying in his game. Bubble. Yeah. And then Josina Anderson went back to uh, Kendall Lankford. Honestly, these sound like names on like Falcon Crest. Oh, they are. So Josina went back to Kendall Lankford, who said, I haven't been in the who and asked him about the shower thing. And he was like, Oh, Kendall's a dude. Kendall is the defensive tackle. Oh, right. Right. So uh, we're barely hanging on by a thread here. By a thread. So when Josina went back to Kendall and was like, What's with the shower thing? And Kendall Lankford was like, I mean, I guess I haven't been in the shower at the same time as Michael Sam, but there could be a million reasons why that is. In he NFL could be training hard. Or he could be taking a run. He could be riding his bike. A summer I don't know. Hamburger helper. I mean, like, who knows? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think he's a tuner helper guy. Yeah. But couldn't it be possible that in um, an NFL locker room, a company that doesn't pay taxes, that they could probably afford more than one shower head? It's probably no, a I mean, it's large. Like, it's a bunch. I would imagine like, it's like a locker room it's shower. It's not like a prison shower. No. Yeah. ESPN is very respected and, and, you know, sort of people go there for sports news. Obviously, it's the first well, where stop for it. Where else are they going to go? I don't know. Sports too? Tennis. I guess sort of why are you reporting? On, why are you doing this? This is a non-story. Yeah. It's perpetuating but bullshit. But didn't they apologize for it? They did end up apologizing. Well, um, after they got busted. Yes, they said, we've, we failed to meet the standards we've set in reporting on LGBT-related topics in sports. You don't need to report on it. Report on it if there's an incident. Quit adding this weird pressure that doesn't need to be there. You're He's apparently doing very well there. Um, so one of the other teammates problems. said, if he doesn't make our team, I'm sure someone will pick him up on another team in a second. Like, he's clearly thriving. So just let it and go. And also, nobody cares there. Actually, I saw a tweet by another football guy, and he was like, dear ES it said something like, dear ESPN. Uh, yeah, this, is so this came from Chris Long, and he said, Dear SPN, everyone but you is over it. Which yes, I think right. is great. Do you think I'm psychic? No, I think you're well read. Would you know this joke? What's black and white and red all over? The newspaper. Aaron Gibson. Oh. What's the black and white part? Well, I always, I wear those black and white cookie pants. What is a cookie pant? Pants made out of cookies. Oh, right. Black and white. Oh, cookie. black and white cookie. Yeah. Got it, yeah. Well, I thought well, we ended that with grace and style and ESPN would be proud. Sorry. <laughs>
Well, we've never had a Grammy winner here. Ever? Yeah. Well, you won a Grammy. I did. Well, I stole a Grammy. We so stole that's the Grammy, difference. Yeah. But no, we're very excited to have Kimbra here. Hi, guys. Two Grammys, right? <laughs> Haven't you? Um, uh, you don't want to talk about I'm, it. I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, because I remember Prince presented you How with How could one you of forget them. that? Everyone in the States knows you yeah. for uh, somebody that I used to know, the track you did with uh, Gautier. How do you, did do people always say Gautier? Have you I heard of it? I don't actually know myself because I feel like I say G- Gautier. But then other people say Gautier and that sounds very exotic. And right. I have never really sat down and asked him, like, dude, which one is it? He, this is the same guy who before <laughs> he wrote that song, he did the cone bras from Madonna, right? Wait. Is oh, you're that? thinking of Jean-Paul Gautier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was like, I don't know about different, that. Different guy altogether. <laughs> Together. You had to get painted. Absolutely, yeah. Did you, do you know Wicked? Have you ever seen the musical Yes, Wicked? I love it. Did they use similar paint? Because, you know, she right. she sweated out green for like a year in yoga class. I didn't sweat it out. I just remember gagging at the thought of paint for weeks to come. You yeah. know, the thought of I'd see people painting on the streets and I'm like, Ugh. Don't come near me. <laughs> I mean, I've done a lot of body painting for the uh, front cover of my first album, Vows. I was also painted on the front and on the back. I've done my run now. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm going to do Barb Walter. I want to go back to that moment when you won that Grammy. Uh, was it more exciting to meet and potentially hug Prince or to win that thing? I mean, it was a crazy experience seeing <laughs> sure. the man himself right there. And what was kind of the biggest honor is he, he took his, you know, he took his shades off for us. Because he had them on when he was announcing the award. And then I remember when he gave it over to me and Wally, you know, he took them off. And he gave us a little, you know, acknowledgement. And then they went back on. That was it. That was it. But was you know it. what? For Prince, that's basically like a hug and a kiss and twirling you in the air. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's that's what that translates to. It's brain. basically the end of Officer and a Gentleman. <laughs> yeah. What he did. What do you think, like, the general, like, if you were talking to a dumb American... And you were like, here's the difference between New Zealand and Australia. And, the, and like, the vibe. Well, the accents are different. And it's hard to pick up. Um, but, you know, after a while spending time in both countries, it's, it actually is pretty obvious. Landscape-wise, New Zealand is a very different um, thing altogether. Very lush, deep greens. Hobbit. So I actually live where I grew up in New Zealand. It was about 20 minutes from the actual Hobbiton. The real, like, they do tours there of Hobbiton. And that's legit where I'm from. It's crazy. Okay. Oh, wow. Do they so, exist? Maybe they do. I mean, it's a big world, and I don't think we're alone. That's what um. That's what they say about the Sagan. Yeah. Oh, Carl Sagan. No, Carl Sagan. Mm-hmm. Carl Sagan. Mm-hmm. Do you try to incorporate the fact that you won a Grammy into like daily conversation? Like, do you drop it no. at Starbucks? Why? You know what you should say? You should be. This is what you should do. You should be like, everyone, hold on, and then you go like, oh, not much. Just talking to my Grammy on the phone. And you could pretend it's your grandmother. Talking to my Grammy. <laughs> and, then, and then you could be like, it's a very expensive call. She lives in New Zealand. And then if people are like, whoa, you must be rich, be like, uh, yes, and a Grammy winner, and then you leave. Well, you could also just get a mobile phone <laughs> that's fashioned seamless. like a Grammy. Yeah. That, that was slick. That would... I mean, <laughs> that was slick. Yeah, I'll give you that. What's your favorite song from the '90s? Ooh. And then he kissed me. Interesting. What um, about um, Pony, Genuine? Oh, that's pretty yeah, good. That's I pretty think classic. I would say Waterfalls is my favorite. Very huh. good classic. <laughs> Maybe it was Memphis by Pam Tillis. <laughs> oh, wow. That's amazing. That's I have not know that song. I do know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do, but that's, that's been a long time. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite. For a reason. Yeah. Is there a genre of music that you're not necessarily a fan of, or do you like? Ooh. I don't know. I mean, in New Zealand, there's a huge reggae scene, and I think because I've been around so much reggae, I kind of, it's sort of the one that I'm like, mm, Take it or leave it. Yeah, it's like me in Texas football. I grew up in really? Texas. I don't need to watch football anymore. <laughs> yeah. I was in the reggae scene probably from like 98 to 99. No, really? you were in the Reagan scene. Nope, reggae. Oh. And um, <laughs> it was great. It was. I met a lot of friends and we smoked a lot of dope. And by the end of it, I got That's a That's what they great, say, smoking dope, yeah. I got they a girlfriend. <laughs> what, what was your girlfriend's name? Nancy Reagan. That's why you're oh, thinking. Oh, right. After Reagan died, I sort of... This stepped on in straight. and you got were, it while I could. So you were straight and listened Only to Only for Nancy Ray. Gotcha. She changed okay. my mind about everything. Have you ever flown Emirates Airlines? Yes. What's it like? It was rad, actually. Yeah. Did you yeah. have an art gallery on yours? I'm just remembering it all now. Please remember it. It's one of my ultimate fan. Like, I'm not kidding. Yeah. One of my fantasies is to fly on Emirates. And I'm remembering because it was, it was doing performance with, with, with Gautier. And I guess, you know, for one reason or another, sure. we got to fly first class. And I remember looking up and the whole roof was just stunned. Stars everywhere, stars, and I'm <laughs> serious. I'm just remembering, and I was watching Wally. W- w- yeah, w- w- the Wally? Pixar movie. Yes, and I was just tripping on everything. I would have said, "Into me now." 
<laughs> like that just yeah. put a tomb it's around beautiful. me and suffocate me. Kimbra, this was such a pleasure. This Thank you fun. so much for coming on. So you're going on tour in October. Yes. Golden Echo is out now. You it can buy is. it digitally, but you should also buy it on vinyl because the art's so beautiful. It's really beautiful. And vows you can also get. Yeah. Have you ever bought anything on iTunes? Yeah, I buy on iTunes all the time. Yeah. Do you Have buy you... your own albums? I haven't done that, no. Do they give you your albums for free? <laughs> yeah, I got, I got <laughs> oh, some. <laughs> this is a sweet deal. How nice of them. <laughs> yeah, right? you put in all that work, you should get an album out of it. Um, no, we, it was such a pleasure. We're yeah. huge fans. And uh, good luck. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you so much. much.